YouTube channel. This is a My First with Marley Bird video. You're going to learn how to make this fantastic poncho today. It's called the Chic Cowl Neck Poncho, designed by Selena Baca, who is absolutely fabulous. For this project, you're going to need some Red Heart Medley yarn. The quantities are going to depend on the size of project you're making. So once you have the, the yarn and a size N crochet hook, which is a 10 millimeter, I'm going to have you grab a good pair of scissors and a couple of removable stitches markers. The last thing you need is going to be the pattern, which is available for free over on the redheart.com website. You can find a link to that right down there in the video notes. While you're down there looking for that link, why don't you go ahead and take the time and smash that like button right now. Let's see if we can get this video up to 200 likes before the release of next month's My First Video. What do you say? You guys are going to love making this little cowl. It is so much fun and everybody you know is going to want one. I know that my daughter has already already tried to uh, <laughs> attack the project bag that this one has been in so that she can wear it to school. She is so excited about it. So go ahead, grab your pattern, grab your yarn and your hook. Let's jump in and learn how to make this really great poncho. You have your pattern and your materials and you're ready to start. Let's take a look at the piece before we begin. When we start this project, we're going to start off by making the cowl portion first, which is really simple. It's just made up of half double crochets worked into the back loop. Once we've created this section that is long enough, we will actually fold the two pieces together and seam them up right there. We'll hold the two pieces together and work a row of stitches to seam it together, okay? It's really easy to do this. After we have the cowl portion complete, we will move on to the body of the poncho. One thing that I really like about Selena Baca's patterns are the fact that they, they add a really big punch to your wardrobe and they are very simple to make. So this one is going to take you no time at all to complete. Let's go ahead and jump in and start off with the cowl portion. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab my end hook and my yarn and I'm going to start off with a slip knot. If you've never made a slip knot before, let me show you how. You place the tail of your yarn on the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and your middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Now turn your hand over. We're going to take our finger, go underneath the first one, grab the second one, and pull. Now you have a nice slip knot loop that we're going to go ahead and put on our hook. Now if this is the first project you've ever crocheted or your first time ever really following crochet instructions, I want to remind you that you will never count the loop on your hook as a stitch. So we're starting here from the very beginning at ground zero. So we have nothing on here. The instructions say we have to go ahead and we have to chain 21. Now as you look down here, you can see obviously this hook is nice and big. So as we're doing our chains, I want to make sure that my resulting stitch is not going to get too small by me pulling on it real tight like that. You see how it gets like the stitch right there begins to become invisible if I work it and then pull it to try and make it real tight. You do not want to do that, okay? It's really easy to accidentally do that as you're working with these big hooks, but I want to make sure that you are very conscientious of making these stitches the same size as your needle because your needle size is what determines the size of your stitch. So as you do your chain and pull through, make sure that those resulting chains are the same size as your crochet hook. You can see here, those stitches are really nice and bold, just like they're supposed to be. This yarn is a rather thick yarn, but I'm telling you, it is, it is so fun to work with and the color changes in it are just beautiful. And so you can make this beautiful shawl and it will look like you've put all of this work into it, changing colors, but the yarn has done all the work for you. Now, I haven't really counted my stitches here, so we're going to say that this is 21, okay? It really doesn't matter on my end, but I want to make sure that you have 21. What you need to do now is we're going to put a half double crochet in the second chain from hook. So knowing that we never count the chain on our hook, we're going to skip the first chain. Now, it might be a little difficult to see your chain depending on what color your yarn is, but if you kind of scrunch up your chains just like this, you can see where one chain ends and another chain begins. 
So I'm going to skip this first one and I'm going to go into the second one. So I'm going to go into the second chain from hook and I'm going to do a half double crochet. So I almost forgot to do the half double. I'm going to yarn over my hook, go into the second chain from hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and draw through all three loops. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to <clears throat> do a half double crochet in each chain all the way to the end. So I'll yarn over my hook, go into the next chain, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, and draw through two. Now I'm going to pause here for just a second. And I'm going to grab one of those stitch markers I told you to get, and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to look for the V that represents the top of the stitch I just completed. And there's that one, okay? So I'm going to look for the V behind that one, because that would be the stitch I first completed, not the one I just completed. Can you see that right now? I'm putting my marker through the very first stitch I completed. Can you see that? So I have my marker in that stitch. I am going to go ahead and carry on. What that marker is going to do is it's going to represent the last stitch of that row when I come back down the next row. So I am going to have no problem knowing where my very last stitch is because I just marked it. So I'm just carrying on working down these chains. You're going to work down all of your chains and at the very end of your row, you're going to have 20 half double crochets. I'm on my very last half double crochet on my chains. I'm going to go ahead and complete that one. And the next part of the instructions say that for rows two through 34 for the smaller size, through row 42 for the next size up, and through row 50 for the next size up. So what will happen is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a half double crochet into the back loop. Now looking at my stitch right here, I can see the V. Okay, let me grab a pen and see if I can point it out. This right here is the V of the stitch, okay? Normally, we would take our hook and put it right there through the V, correct? So that each leg of the V is on our hook. What we're going to do is we're going to actually only go through the back leg of that stitch and complete our half double crochet. Let me show you what I mean. I've yarned over my hook to work my half double crochet. I'm going to go into the back leg of that stitch, complete my half double crochet, and carry on. Now I want to take a minute at this point in time and grab my second marker and add it to this stitch. So I just finished this stitch and you can see there's the resulting V of the stitch, right? So that would be the, the complete stitch. So I'm going to take this marker and stick it through that section. Can you see that? I'm just sticking it through both legs. So instead of just the back loop or just the front loop, I'm putting my marker around both loops, okay? Now I can go ahead and I can carry on. I carry on down this row, working half double crochets into each half double crochet down the entire row and down the subsequent rows um, as it's written in the pattern. You'll notice here as I get to the end that it will be very easy for me to know where my last stitch is without really having to count because I placed that marker there. So if you have been crocheting for a while and maybe you have a really hard time knowing where the first stitch or the last stitch is of a row, Markers that are removable will help you immensely because they mark out the stitch precisely for you to know where that last stitch of the row is. So if you use these markers correctly, you will always have edges that are nice and clean and straight. So typically you get down here and you would work this stitch and some people are like, well, wait a minute, do I have one more stitch? Do I not have one more stitch? Well, the answer is yes, because I have a marker right there, I know that I have one more stitch. So I can yarn over, go into the back leg of that stitch, and complete my half double crochet. I would do my chain one and turn, and I will repeat that row, correct? So I yarn over, go into the back leg of this stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. Now I can remove the marker from down here, and I'm going to move it up into this new stitch. So I'm going to remove this one, come up, find the V of the stitch I just created, see how my marker is right in there, and I can carry on down the row. 
This is why you need two markers. You need to have one on either side. So that way when we come down here, we have a marker. When we come back, we have a marker here. Go ahead, carry on in the pattern just like this until you finish the cowl portion. Once you finish the cowl portion, I'm gonna show you how to seam it together, join it together, and we're gonna get started on the body of the poncho, all right? The cowl neck of your poncho is complete and it's time to join it together. Let's see how to do that. As you look down here, you can see that I have this swatch that I've completed and it obviously is smaller than what yours is, but this is enough for me to be able to show you what you need to do. Once you've completed the number of rows you're supposed to complete for your cowl, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the very first chain edge, your very first row, and you're gonna fold it up right up next to the row that you just finished working, okay? So once you fold that up and you bring them together, the stitches are actually going to match up. One chain for one stitch, one chain for one stitch. Now, you're gonna work through both thicknesses and into both loops of the stitches in the first row and back loops only of the last row. So what's gonna happen here is I'm on my last row here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to chain one and working into this row, so I'm gonna work into the first stitch of this row and into the back loop only of the row I just finished. So just like we've been doing all along, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to join the first row to the last row with a slip stitch. So I yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the one on my needle. Go over to the next stitch, so it'd be one stitch from the first row, if I can get my needle in there, and then one stitch or the back leg of the next stitch on the row I just completed, and then do my slip stitch. I'm gonna do this all the way down the row. Now, if you just saw what I just did, it's a little trick that I have learned uh, over the years that if I need to work into stitches like this, I actually use the hook of my needle to grab into the stitch I need to get into. Can you see what I did there? I grabbed it and pulled it around and then I can just like stab into the back loop that I need to go into. I don't know what it is, it just makes it easier for me to do that. So I can grab and stab. Ha! <laughs> that rhymes. So I'm gonna grab this one and I'm going to stab. I, oh, I already did it into the next one over. You wanna be very careful that you're following along and not accidentally going into the same stitch twice. So as you're going along, make sure you're keeping your, ed your two pieces as um, even as possible until you get to the very end. Now, when we get to the very end and this is completely joined, we are not going to fasten off our work. We're gonna keep our loop actually attached because we will be able to go ahead and jump in to the body of the shawl. Now, the body of the shawl is really something awesome because once you get the established pattern down, you just repeat that pattern for the number of rows, the pattern states for whatever size you're making, and then you will go ahead and just finish it all off with a Pico bind off and it's fairly easy. So there's no more shaping that needs to happen. Now, the reason you had to do this particular join, look how pretty that is. The reason she, Selena, is so smart. The reason she had this join work up for this cowl is because when you join it together in such a way, this ridge actually resembles the ridges that you have created just by doing the half double crochets in the back loop all along. So even though there is a small ridge there and I can see it and you can see it because you just created it, it will be virtually invisible on your actual poncho. So isn't that cool? All right, so now we're going to jump in and work the body, okay? So you'll notice I have not cut my yarn. I'm just rotating my work, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take my end and just kind of tuck it down so it's out of the way, and I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this pattern. Now it says, with the right side facing me and the seam of the cowl um, on the cowl neck facing me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain three stitches, and it says this counts as a double crochet now 
now and throughout, which means our handy dandy stitch marker needs to come into play. So I'm gonna put my stitch marker into the third chain I just created there, because that's the top of my stitch when it's time to come around and join with my slip stitch. So I've created my, my three chains. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a double crochet right here into this seam. So I've yarned over my hook, go into the seam, right into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So I've done a double crochet right into the seam. Now you'll notice in the pattern you have brackets, which inside the brackets it says to chain two and then do two double crochets into the end of the next row. So this is the next row. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do two double crochets into the end of this next row. What this is doing is we're setting ourselves up for the body stitch of the actual poncho. So what's really convenient here is that as you do these double crochets at the end of these rows, it's gonna come out really even. If you've done the right number of rows of your cowl, you'll have the right number of double crochet um, couples I'll call them coupled stitches, all the way around. Now, I mentioned those brackets earlier. Those brackets mean that that chain one and two double crochets at the end of the row um, are going to be repeated. And so there's a number outside of the brackets. That number outside of the brackets, that's the number of times you're going to repeat that. So depending on the size you're making, you will do however many uh, uh, coupled double crochet couples there are. So I chain two, come over here to the next end of the row and go ahead and work two double crochets. And a double crochet is a yarn over, go into the end of the row, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. And then I would chain two and carry on going into the end of the row, so on and so forth. Now one thing I do want you to notice is that the color of the yarn is changing as I work along. I've not changed my skein of yarn at all. This is all done with the way this particular yarn is made. And I'm hoping that you guys are out there using this same yarn because it is really lovely to work with. Um, it's really soft, it works up really great, and the colors are just really exciting. You can't wait to get to the next color to see how it's going to really pop on on your, your actual fabric, your poncho that you're making. So hopefully you're getting a chance to try out this medley yarn. And it is a number five bulky yarn, so it goes really quick, especially with this big end hook right here. Now remember, my swatch is a different size than your guys's. So your guys's, is that proper English? I don't know. Than yours, how about that? Than yours. My swatch is smaller than yours. So I'm gonna be done quicker than you are, and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my entire round I'm just going to put my double crochet sets in each uh, end of the row for all the way around so that way I can show you how to join, okay? So my numbers are not going to coincide with any of the numbers you are working with, um, but the process is exactly the same. So I'm going into the end of the row here, and I'm just doing my double crochets until I get to the end chain two. Don't forget to do that chain two because it's very important to do that chain two because you're going to be working into that chain two on the next row and the next row really sets you up for the rest of the pattern, okay? Here we go. So I just did my chain two and I'm at the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch into the beginning of my chain three. So if you have not marked it, you could go ahead and try and count, but because I've marked it, I know exactly where I need to do my slip stitch. It's right into that marked chain. So I yarn over, pull through, and then pull through my loop on my hook. I can go ahead, I can remove my marker because I'm gonna use it again. I'm gonna move it up here in just a second. Now, round two. It says we're gonna begin by doing a slip stitch into the next double crochet. So I'm gonna go into the next double crochet and do a slip stitch. And then I need to go ahead and do a slip stitch into the first chain two. What this is doing is it's essentially moving my hook over into position so that way I can begin to build my shells that I'm gonna do right here in the chain two space.
So by moving my, my um, moving my hook over with my stitches, with the slip stitches, I'm now prepared to work what I need to do for this next row. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by doing my chain one, which does not count as a stitch. It even says so in the pattern. So I do my chain one, it does not count as a stitch, and now I have to do a shell. Now those of you who aren't sure how to do a shell, uh, you'll notice that in the pattern itself, it doesn't tell you how to do a shell within row round two. It actually is over on the side underneath special stitches. So if you need to go over there and check it out, you can. But it's really easy to do the shell for this, this particular pattern. You're going to do two double crochets. So we're going to do one and two. And all of these are having, um, are being put in this chain two space, okay? So two double crochets, chain two, and then two double crochets. So easy, you don't have to work into actual chains. We're going into that big old space right there, so this makes it fun and fast. Look at that, so that is my first shell, absolutely complete. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna do a shell in the next chain two space. So I yarn over, and I do my shell, which is a double crochet and another double crochet a chain two, and then two more double crochets. Now I will caution you guys that when a pattern says shell, okay, not all shells are created equal. Each pattern and each designer will state what a shell is to them specifically in the pattern. So just as I said, you need to go check out what the shell is according to this designer and it's written over in the special stitches and usually it is written in special stitches. Whether it's a shell like the one we're completing here or if it's a shell where it's like five double crochets in one space who knows um, there are so many different ways to create crochet shells don't assume you already know the method that or the stitch that is being used in the pattern always go and check out what the designer wrote out to be that specific shell okay you'll notice as I'm going along I'm just doing two double crochets chain two two double crochets which is my shell into each chain two space all the way around until I get back to my beginning. Now, if you noticed, I did not put my marker in the very first stitch, did I? Now, I actually forgot, but it's gonna be a happy accident because I'm gonna show you how difficult it is really to find where that first stitch is um, so that way you can see why it is so important to use your marker, okay? It's really important to not forget those markers. But that's what happens when you're doing a video like this and you're talking the whole time, you tend to forget little things um, but you won't have that problem at home which is great I'm near the end here and I'm gonna finish up my shells and this is so cool once I get this row done I've really set it up and the next row is just repeated until the end of the shawl and at the very very last row we'll do pico which I will show you how to do um, just on one of these little rows that I'm completing here so I don't have to do the entire poncho since I didn't do the full size here. I just wanted to do enough to make sure I could get you through the pattern. Since the My First with Marley Bird are really geared towards beginners and having this be your first big project, this is your first poncho, I wanna really make sure I'm taking the time to walk you through each step along the way. So even though I could have done just little swatches to show you how to do the shell, how to do the half double crochets, I think it's important that I make these larger swatches to actually show you how to do these stitches, don't you think? Um, consequently, that means the videos are a little bit longer, but I'm hoping that you appreciate that and you won't forget to smash that like button and tell everybody that you do appreciate these videos and all the work I put into them. All right, here I am. I'm to the very end. I'm going to go ahead and do my chain one and I need to join with the slip stitch to the first double crochet. Well, I'm looking here and I'm like, man, that kind of looks like a big mess, doesn't it? It looks like a big mess. Well, luckily, I know that my my first double crochet was the first double crochet of the shell. So I can go, that's the last one, that's the second to last, there's my chain two, there's my first, or my first, my, let's see, last, almost last, second one, and here's my first one. There's my first double crochet. So I would go in here and I would find the V, the top of the V, and put my slip stitch right there. All right, I split my yarn, I didn't mean to do that. 
and so I would put my slip stitch there and that's the join. Now, obviously I was able to find my double crochet, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you could actually put your slip stitch in the wrong place. So it's just so much easier to use your stitch marker and make sure you place it correctly, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to round three, which is what you're gonna repeat for the entire pattern. So once we have this down, you're gonna be good to go. You're gonna be golden. So round three, it says we're gonna slip stitch into the next double crochet, just like we did before, slip stitch, and we're gonna slip stitch into the next chain two space. Ah, so we're putting our hook and our yarn back into our chain two space so that we can begin to build our shells again, correct? So we're gonna go ahead and chain one, it does not count as a stitch, and we jump in and we complete our shell. So we're gonna do our double crochet. I'm gonna take my marker at this point in time and put it into that double crochet I just completed so I don't have to worry about it next time. And I'm gonna do my second double crochet, chain two, and then two more double crochets to complete my shell. Chain one, or not chain one, but two double crochets right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chain one and I go all the way over here to the next chain two space. Don't make a mistake and put it right there in that chain one space. We're gonna build them all into the chain two spaces. So make sure you're all the way over there, okay? I'm all the way over to the next chain two space and I'm working my shell into the chain two of the previous shell. And that's the way all of the rounds are worked. Make sure you do a chain one between each shell and then go all the way over to the next shell. So if you carry on like this, just building your shells and at the end of the row, join with your slip stitch to the first double crochet and then you will slip stitch over to the next double crochet slip stitch over to the next chain two space and then begin building your shells again you do that for the number of rows that are written in the pattern to until you're essentially until your poncho is long enough or as long as you want it to be just remember if you alter any of the number of rows in the pattern you will require more yarn so make sure you plan um accordingly for that. Once you have all of the body of the pattern complete, you finish it off with one round of pico stitches, which are not difficult at all. So I'm gonna show you that next. I'm gonna finish this round and I'm gonna jump into the pico rounds so that you know how to do that. All right, so I just finished the end of my round and I'm gonna pretend that it's time for me to do my pico round. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. The first thing the pattern says to do is to do a slip stitch into the next double crochet and a slip stitch into the chain two space so that way our yarn is prepared in the correct spot. We're going to do a chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and we're gonna put two single crochets into this chain two space. So I did the first one, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my marker into that first one after it's complete. And I'm gonna do my second one. Now it states that I need to do a pico. Now the pico instructions are written in the same spot as the shell instructions where it says special stitches. And so we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to slip stitch in the third chain from hook. So we're gonna go down to the third chain from our hook, go into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through. We go ahead and we do two more single crochets in the same chain two space that we just created that. And looky there, we have a cute little pico. We go ahead, we chain two, come over here to the chain one space, do a single crochet, chain two, whoops, two, and then we're back over here to our chain two space where we do two single crochets, one, two, then we do our pico, which is one, two, three chains, and we do a slip stitch into the third chain, and we do two more single crochets in that same chain two spot. You see how that works? We would carry on with chain two, do a single crochet in the chain one spot, chain two, man, why do I keep losing my, my chain there? And we're back over here to the chain two spot. Now I'm gonna set this aside and let's bring in the actual finished sample so you can see what the full picots look like when they're all complete. 
I'm gonna pop this over here and I'm just gonna hold it down like this. You can see as these are worked around, as you do those chain threes and then slip stitch, it creates that really cool pico look, just like that. So mine are not that far off from the way those look. Can you see that? Pretty darn cool, pretty easy. Once you've completed the Pico Edge, you are done with your chic cowl neck poncho. You can put this on and go strut your stuff out on the streets and let people know that you made this really great poncho with the help of Marley Bird right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel and the My First videos. I hope you've enjoyed this project and we'll go check out more of Selena Baca's patterns right over at redheart.com. She is such a fabulous designer and Red Heart is lucky enough to have some of her most fabulous patterns and you are lucky enough that they are available for free. Make sure you join me each month when there's a brand new My First with Marley Bird video release right here on the Marley Bird channel. You can find out by hitting subscribe and you will be the first one to know when there's a new video released. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns and this is the My First with Marley Bird. Talk to you later. Bye.